Okay, we're going to go over a quick example of how to enable the logging on your iSIM server. So um, regardless of the server version, generally, we're going to go over the basic details. So um, you need to start off by going to your iSIM server. In this case, on this Windows machine, the default directory is program files x86 IBM iSIM. There'll be a data folder. In that data folder, there'll be a data file. This would be the enroll logging dot properties. You can see it here. When you open that file, there's quite a bit of information in here, but the most relevant sections will be these. Um, the first thing to note that the amount of log files that will be retained and the size is down here in this section. So the maximum number of trace.log files, which is the primary log file for the application of the ISIM server. In this case, we're going to keep uh, 10 files of 1 megabyte each. Um, so note that. The next section of this file will denote the actual types of categories for logging that we're going to log. Um, if we're looking at an issue to a remote service target, which is like an adapter, um, you would want to have remote services set to debug underscore max. The default level will be set as debug underscore min and it'll be logged out just as this one is. So to enable that, what you'll do is you uncomment out the line and ensure that the remote services level equals debug max as you see here. And uh, another most common one that gives you the most bang for your buck there is going to be the workflow as well. Defining the unit of work that's going from one target to the next. In this case your ISM server, out to your remote interface, um, the steps that it does in between and return and some of the workflow that happens between there. So with those two categories set, that'll give you um, the most information you're going to want from a remote services target type debug to an adapter, in this case be an ADK adapter or a TDI based adapter. This is the server side component logging. Um, one thing to note if you're unaware of where this is going to log to, in that same file, it'll tell you the handler.filer information will then show you the log detail of where that's going to go. And the output of that, of course, is going to be the trace.log. And for every iteration of that, it'll rotate in the log for j and it'll save the log file up to as many as you have defined. So we'll go ahead and save that file. And then uh, we'll go out here and I'll show you where those logs are. In here you note trace.log is our root file. You note each of these are at a megabyte each. Now once you have set that logging parameter, um, you need to wait a few moments for that server to then refresh its server setting to allow the logging to be updated. It generally happens within a few minutes. Then you rerun your um, scenario for your recreate on your server and those new settings will take place and your new debug will be present in the log. So that's how you enable the logging on your SIM server side to get debug out of it. Also there's a link here that I'll provide that'll show you uh, what some of those components actually do troubleshoot different problems that you may have. Thank you.